I have for you another haul. Another haul, it's fall, the fall look haul. Cheerleading, I don't know what I'm doing. Hello, so it's fall and I'm really, really excited about it. When I was younger, fall used to be this dreaded time where I go back to school, but now that I'm not in school anymore, it's the time where it stops being blaringly hot in LA, which I'm very, very excited about since I don't have air conditioning. It was 75 today and I was like, Thank you. There's no like nice leaves like there is in New Jersey. I'm going back there soon though because I'm going to New York City Comic Con. If you're going, Jesse, Kat, myself, and Natasha are doing a booktube panel on Friday, October 9th. If you're gonna be at New York City Comic Con, maybe hit it up because like I'm really nervous. It's really last minute. What if no one comes? You should totes come. It's gonna be totes fun. I'm so excited to go back to the East Coast where it's real fall. This is gonna be a magical time. I'm going to Atlanta, Georgia soon, Hotlanta, to host Ransom Riggs' book event with Jesse and Kat, celebrating the release of Library of Souls on October 2nd. Hopefully I'll see some of you guys there. This isn't Library of Souls. It's not out yet. This is Hollow City, our September book of the month, which I just started. I'm on page 31, which is actually really not far at all. What I love about Ransom's books is that they start on like page 11. So you'll be reading for like 10 minutes and you're like, oh man, I'm already on page 25. I'm gonna leave more information about Comic-Con and the October 2nd Library of Souls event in the doobly-doo. If you don't know about them, Miss Peregrine's Home for Peculiar Children series yet. I have a book talk about Miss Peregrine's Home for Peculiar Children that you can click right up here. I really, really enjoyed the first book. I'm already enjoying the second book. It's a good thing to pick up. The next book I have to show you today, these last few months I've been working with Harlequin and they sent me Legacy of Kings by Eleanor Herman. I'm actually reading two books right now. I'm Audio booking Legacy of Kings <laughs> and I'm reading Hollow City on the physical book because of the pictures in it. And I'm very much enjoying both. I was lucky enough to get to meet Eleanor Herman at BEA earlier this year. She seems very eccentric, very cool. She was in full on cosplay to go along with Legacy of Kings. Legacy of Kings, I'm like halfway through and it's so interesting because there is a fantasy element to this book. It takes place in the Alexander the Great time, which is 340 BC. It's when the Greek gods were still a big thing. It's when Alexander the Great was a teenager. I feel like everything is so historically accurate because the author is a historian, but then there's this magic element to it, which is really interesting because I was expecting it to not be magic at all. And it's gonna be a series, it's very different, and I'm enjoying just how different the world is. I've never read a YA book that takes place in this time period, like 360 BC, that's pretty far back, y'all. And so I feel like I'm learning. It's nice and purple on the inside. Herman mixes real history with magic, mystery, and intrigue, putting the epic in epic fantasy. It does feel like an epic. It feels like an old Greek epic, except young adultized, young adultized, made for young adult audience. Good stuff so far. I'm excited to finish it. The next book I have to show you today is Life with a Sprinkle of Glitter by Louise Pentland. I don't know much about Louise's book, except that she wrote it. And Louise is wonderful. I don't know if you follow her on YouTube, but she's Sprinkle of Glitter. She's super, super nice. She's super funny. I'm really excited to have her book. I think it's all about living your life in a more positive way and spreading happiness and just really good stuff. And it's all in color. The next book I have to show you today is actually a book I already have, but I went to Summer in the City and they had a penguin booth there and they gave me a little penguin goodie bag and inside it was the Queen of the Tearling. I already have the Queen of the Tearling. I actually have two copies. I have a really beautiful hard copy and I have the paperback copy that came out in April. But this copy is also different. This is the UK copy. So I've just started a collection of a Queen of the Tearling book. If you don't know what Queen of the Tearling is about, it's this girl who is destined to be queen, but not until she's 19 and she's been in hiding, so she's not murdered and she's 19. It's time for her to take the queenship. So she has to make the journey to the kingdom and take it over and be like, hey bitch, this is my throne. Get off of it. I'm 19 now and it's time. If you wanna know my full thoughts? I have a book talking about it and click right here to watch it. Next! The next book I have here is huge and beautiful. And I kind of hold it in my Percy Jackson unboxing, but like, I feel like I need to christen all my books now. They have to come through the hall hall. Percy Jackson and the Greek Heroes. I'm really excited to audiobook this because I audiobooked Percy Jackson the Greek Gods and it was so much fun. This one's even bigger. It has beautiful illustrations. Wait, show an illustration. Oh, there's one! I think that's a minotaur. 
Oh, look how nice. Look how nice. It's very, very pretty. And I'm glad to have a companion now to go next to the other oversized giant Percy Jackson book I have on my shelf. Because when it's alone, it's just like, ew, what is that giant uncomfortable book sticking out of your shelf? With two, it's like, oh, it has a friend. Now it fits in and it has a brother to play with. I shared these in my Percy unboxing as well. But if you missed that, if you missed that, if you want to watch it, it's here because I... Unbox some other cool stuff. You can watch it here. But if you just want to see the books, these are the other books that I got in that box. It's the new Percy Jackson paperbacks that have the new mural covers. Whoo! Whoo! Like, I'm not a huge fan of the mural covers, but they're nice. If you put all the spines together, it forms a New York City skyline where Mount Olympus is. Whoo! They're not in order, so it's not right right now. Next! Okay, these two books aren't technically books, but beautiful fake books. Books that amazing viewers made me. I met so many amazing people that watched my videos at VidCon and then at Summer in the City. Everyone was so sweet and wonderful and I'm so grateful that I got to meet you. I'm so grateful to have you in my life supporting the things that I make and reading with me and discussing everything. With I just, I'm so, so, so thankful. I received these awesome fake books. This one is from a girl named Isabel and it looks like a book. See? See? And it says a book talk with Xtine May, just like my banner. Inside of it, she gave me two of her favorite books, Jenny and the Cat Club, and Where Rainbows End by Cecilia Ahern. This is the same author that wrote Love Rosie and P.S. I Love You. It was very, very sweet. Thank you again. This is beautiful and I'm putting it on my shelf forever. I need a third shelf. I'm moving really soon. Another thing, exciting thing that's happening in the fall that I have to rearrange my bookshelves again, which is fun, but also very difficult. And the second fake book I got was from an amazing viewer named Jenny that I met somewhere in the city. <gasps> Look at it! It's the same lion that's on my shirt! Look at this! It's like rays, and you're gonna hear me roar! Oh, it's so cute, Jenny! It's going right next to my book talk with Xtine May, and inside it, look! It's Poland, and it's bananas! These are just so beautiful. I don't even, I just, I will treasure them forever. And along with the fake book from Jenny, she also gave me her favorite book, which is The Search for Wonderlock, which supposedly is like Alice in Wonderland in space, and it has a lot of really nice illustrations. Thank you guys, again. And thank you everyone else who gave me letters and anything. I'm sorry I can't show everything. These are particularly book-like. I felt they fit in with the haul. Next, 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 next. The next book is one that I just finished. I wasn't planning on reading it so immediately, but I had to. Queen of Shadows is amazing. It's the fourth book in the Throne of Glass series. You gotta read it. You gotta read it. If you haven't watched my book talk yet, I just put it up. If you've read the Throne of Glass series and you haven't seen any of my book talks, they're actually some of my favorite book talks that I've done too. If you wanna watch that playlist of book and talkies, they're right here. I put them right here. Next! Next! Next, does it look like I'm holding a football? It kind of does, but you can't see my whole body. Fall is also a time for football. I don't watch football. I, I, don't, I don't watch football, but my sister dresses my dog up in giant clothes. I have no idea what's going on, but my dog looks cute. The next book I have to show you today, who is my British version of Harry Potter that I got when I was in London. Maybe if you watched my Harry Potter video, you already saw it, but again, it didn't come through the hall. It has to be christened. In the hall. My name, my name is Harry Potter. Hi, I'm Paul. Harry Potter, Harry Potter. There are new British versions of Harry Potter that are really cute. I love this new Harry Potter design. It looks really different from the original design. And being the Harry Potter fan that I am, I was tempted to buy more than just one book. But I'm in London and I have no way of transporting seven giant books home. So I got one to add to my collection. It's Deathly Hallows, it's purple. It's completely different from my orange version. There's Hagrid and Harry on the motorcycles in the back. I love how the sky is purple and like there's nice gold stars. It's just really, really nice. It doesn't have the little illustrations that we get in our versions. I don't know if the new versions of our versions have little illustrations at the top of the chapters, but the original Harry Potter hardcover American versions have little illustrations at the top of every chapter. And that actually really influenced the way that I visualized a lot of the characters like Umbridge and Snape. I saw them as I saw their little cartoons. I don't know, it's really interesting to think that some people didn't have those. I don't know if the British versions have those. So they could have visualized so differently. That never happens in books. 
but I did really like those. I really enjoyed them. I'm glad I had them my first time through Harry Potter. Anyway, long, long story not made short. I love this version and I'm very happy that I spent the 20 pounds that I did on it. The last two books today. This next book is another one that I got in a Summer in the City Penguin Books goodie bag and that is Dreamwalker by J.D. Oswald. I don't know anything about this book. It sounds like someone who walks through dreams. Kind of like that Wake series from the Twilight era of my life. Wake, Fade. Anybody read those? They were tiny, kind of depressing. Girl can go into other people's dreams. In a small village miles from the great cities of Twin Kingdoms, a young boy called Errol, <gasps> just like the owl from Harry Potter, <laughs> tries to find his way in the world. He's an outsider. He looks different from other children. I've never known his father. This says nothing about dream walking. This sounds so different from Wake and Fade. Book one, wow, this is a mystery to me. Oh, it's signed. Wow, what a nice surprise. I like the cover, it's nice. It's nice, I'd be interested to see how it compares to the American cover. The last book I have to show you today was one that I forgot about. I've been excited about it for a long time because I read Huntley Fitzpatrick's book, My Life Next Door, a couple years ago. I have a book talk for it. I'll try to link it here, it should be linked here. She said she's gonna write a companion novel about two of the characters in that book, Tim and Alice, and I loved the characters this book. I really, really enjoyed it. It was a contemporary, I feel like I might have forgotten in my contemporary noobs video because I had read it so long ago, but maybe not. Maybe it's in there. Anyway, this is that book, that companion novel, The Boy Most Likely To by Huntley Fitzpatrick. It's got her trademark beautiful spine with the stripes. The cover is really nice. There's humans on it, but they're not like too human. You can't see their faces. I love the coloring. I just, I think it's really nice. I'm really excited about it. Mm. Cause these books may fall. Can you feel it now? These words that they da na 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 fall down. It's a revolution. That didn't go well. Oh. Oh, lunges, lunge. That's my fall book haul, guys. Thank you for joining me. I'm Christine. If you wanna follow me on Twitter, I tweet, my name is Alex Steenway. I also Instagram, um, my name is Alex Steenway. I Snapchat sometimes and my name is Alex Steenway. And I have Facebook and Tumblr and it's not Alex Steenway, so. The links are in the doobly doo. Thanks for watching, I'm Christine. I'll see you next time. Goodbye. Ah, ah, ah. Oh, I'm into the bed. Shine your shoes, wipe your...